I was considering using my webcam for this video and then I realized how awful the quality is. So instead we're going to use my phone. Hey guys, it's Avery from Video Blind and today's video is on the new Android O announcement that we've just heard from Google. They officially announced that Android O is the next Android operating system and they announced a developer build which is available today and all sorts of new features that are coming in the developer build, which I'm going to go over right now. Android O is going to be the 15th major release of Android, and it's following their regular alphabetical naming scheme coming after Android N for Nougat. We don't yet know what Android O is going to stand for, but there are a few speculations being Oreos and other candies like that. In the first developer preview, we're only seeing a few big changes to the operating system, and many of them won't matter to the everyday user of Android, but a lot of them are going to be very nice for more advanced users of Android. The first one is going to be background limits. In Android 6 and 7, there was Android Doze, which was a new feature which would basically limit the amount amount of power that background applications could use when you weren't using your phone. And Android 7, it got even better. Even when your phone's screen was off, those applications would go into a sleep mode. So it didn't have to be in your pocket or anything like that. In Android O, being Android 8, we're going to be seeing even more restrictive measures put on this feature. It's not going to be under Doze necessarily. It's just under a new feature called background limits. Pretty much when your screen is off, it's going to restrict lots of features that these applications have and background tasks and stuff like that so that they're not using up as much battery life. It's going to noticeably extend your battery just like when they release Doze and I'm really excited for it. Next we have notification channels. Now this update I find very interesting. It's going to sort notifications from all of your apps just as the name implies. For example if you have a news app like we're seeing in this example right here it will sort all of the news into multiple categories based on the type of information that the notification is telling you, what it's changing on your phone, whether it's an always persistent notification or not, and stuff like that. So now you'll be able to limit certain notifications from certain apps instead of having the option to either turn the notifications on or off as a whole for that app. This is going to be very nice, especially for those game apps that always send buggy notifications to you telling you to play the game again. And now you're not going to get those persistent notifications being sent to you, but you don't have to block all notifications from that app. We have autofill APIs, which is going to bring autofill capabilities to many apps that didn't have it before. This is going to work both with username, passwords, email addresses, addresses, stuff like that, as well as payment forms like credit cards and PayPal accounts. And and stuff like that. So many apps that didn't have it before are going to get this ability pretty soon. One of the biggest new changes that I'm really excited for, mainly because it's a visual change that we'll actually be able to see, is picture in picture or PIP or however you want to say it. And this was already on Android TV devices, but what this will be able to do is you'll be able to play a video in the background while still using the same or other apps. This is going to be really nice, especially for people who like to watch YouTube videos or, or news broadcasts but also want to multitask and maybe play a game or browse the internet or check their email at the same time. We have adaptive icons which I think is really cool. What this does is you'll see that a lot of different phones whether it's just stock Android phone like a Nexus or something with a different launcher like a Pixel or Samsung or LG phone, this update is going to allow people to implement multiple different app icons into their app so that it corresponds with all the other icons that those devices will show. For example, if you're on a Pixel device, all of your app icons are going to be circles and maybe someone built the app for a square or curved square icon. The icon will now show as a circle instead of trying to fit with the original style of the app icon. That way you can design your app icon once and it will match the user interface for all sorts of different Android phones. You have a couple cool things right here that I think are a little more techy, but I'll still point them out. We have high quality Bluetooth audio. So there's a new LDAC codec, which is going to get you even higher quality audio through Bluetooth connections than before. Bluetooth has always been a very limited connection for quality, especially for music. So a lot of audio files always chose the wired route because you always get the highest quality audio that way. But this is going to give you a much higher audio quality through Bluetooth for anyone who likes to go wireless. And then we 
we have NAN or Network Aware Networking Connectivity. And what this is, just in a brief summary, it allows two Android devices to connect together without a wireless access point and share their internet connection. This was a thing exclusive to Pixel and Nexus devices, and now any device running Android 8 or Android O is going to be able to use this feature. We have enhanced keyboard navigation, which is gonna be pretty helpful, especially for Chromebooks and new tablets like Samsung's new Tab series, which have keyboards attached to them. A new update to the newest version of Java 8, and some other things like WebView and A-Audio API and all sorts of other stuff which I will link in the description below. I'm not going to go over them because I'm not totally familiar with them and there are a lot more changes that I think you guys should decide whether you want to hear about or not. Anyways, if you're interested in trying out Android O, mainly if you're a developer, but if you have any of these devices, the Nexus 5X, 6P, the Nexus Player, or any of the Pixel devices being the Pixel C, the Pixel, and the Pixel XL, your device is currently supported under the Developer Preview 1, meaning there is a Developer Preview 1 download for you, which you can manually flash to your device. I'll also include the link to this webpage, which Google has all of the instructions for flashing these ROMs to your phone or tablet. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get one of these installed on my Nexus 6P, and that's what my next video is going to be about. So I hope you guys stay tuned to the channel. Don't forget to like if you like this video, and subscribe to see more future videos like a full Android O developer preview summary. And I'll be finding all sorts of bugs and stuff like that if you're interested in seeing if this is an operating system that you feel comfortable installing on your phone yet, or if you wanna wait for a beta or full version of Android O to come out for your device. Thanks for watching and have a great day.